as active. I'll hold on the shift key and click on the last of that series to get all three of them selected. And then let's see what we can do to be able to adjust all three at once. Whenever you have three images selected, you don't have to select them from the film strip. You could have done it back in the library. It doesn't matter. Just whenever you have multiple images uh, selected and you go to the develop module, there is a button near the lower right, right next to the reset button. Mine currently says sync, but yours, if you look at it, might say something more like auto sync. What that button is labeled is dependent on the setting in the little bitty light switch that's next to it, that thing. If I click that, it will turn on auto sync. If I click it again, it just says sync dot dot dot. So I want that in the up position right now. When it says auto sync, that means that any change I make to this image will also affect all the other images that are currently selected. And so therefore, I have three images selected. We can affect all three of them. This image I can see was worked on in an older version of Lightroom because it has an exclamation point in the lower right. I'm going to click on that to update it to the newer uh, kind of controls. Let's come in here and convert this to black and white. I'll go down to HSL, where I have that little donut to use. Oops, what did I do? Black and white. Black and white. Okay. I could have just clicked on the word black and white. Um, I grab a little donut, and now I can adjust. This used to be yellowish. I can brighten or darken it to get the, the area to look good. I don't know if there was much color in the elephants or not. If there is, and it's different than the yellow, I could adjust them separately. But I think it's too similar to the a little more orange and red, it looks like. But it is affecting the uh, bottom as well. If I had a blue sky, I can click there and adjust it. In this case, I'm not going to be able to get much of a change because that sky was pretty gray to begin with. So there's not much of a hint of color. So again, the image should be black and white, but I find pure black and white can often be a boring end result. It doesn't have enough personality to it. And so usually after I convert things to black and white, I'll end up adding color back to the image, just a hint of color. To accomplish that, I go to the next area down. It's called split toning. And in split toning, I can add color to either the bright portion of the image or add it to the dark portion, or both. And so let's see what it looks like if we put some color in this image. If you move the hue slider, that's where you choose the color you're going to apply. Do you want it to be reddish? Do you want it to be bluish, yellowish, and so on? But just moving that slider is not enough to get the image to change. That tells you what color you're going to get, but then the slider below tells you how strong it'll be. How, how red or orange, in this case, is it going to be? And right now it's set to zero, so you get zero color. I need to bring up the saturation in order to see that color. If I leave it at zero, I won't see it. Now if, a little tip here, if you have your saturation at zero and you still want to see what the colors would do, here's a little hidden feature. If you hold down the option key, Alt and Windows, that's what I'm holding down right now, and click on the hue slider, it will preview this as if you had the saturation turned way up. And that can just make it easier to see exactly what color it is you're choosing. And I want to go for kind of a brownish yellow on this particular one, so maybe somewhere about there. Now remember, I have the option key held down, Alt and Windows, and that's what gives me this preview. If I didn't have the option key held down, moving hue, uh, I wouldn't even notice anything happening to my picture because saturation is down at zero. And that means how much of the color should we have. So that's just a little trick. You don't have to remember it, but if you happen to use this a lot and you're already used to it, it's convenient to know it's hidden in there. So now I'll bring up my saturation, and we'll get some color in my highlights. Then I can put either the same color or a different color in the dark portion of my image by adjusting the two sliders under shadows. And so maybe in my shadows, I want a slightly different color. Maybe I'm either going to go more reddish or more yellowish in my color, and then bring up saturation. It gives me a slightly different look 